week I'm taking my 20 foot tall stone fireplace and transforming it into this painted white stone fireplace with a solid oak reclaimed beam mantle that weighs every bit of 300 pounds. So the idea is to transform this thing completely by painting all this stone white and adding a huge reclaimed beam mantle. So when I originally said that I was gonna paint this thing, I had a ton of people telling me, don't paint it, it's gonna look awful. But I'm convinced that this is gonna be absolutely beautiful. So I'm really excited to do it, but it's gonna be a lot of work. Again, this thing is 20 foot tall on this side, about 15 feet tall on the other side. I've gotta clean all this stone. I've gotta tape everything off. I've gotta prime it a couple times and then I can apply the final paint. There's a ton of stuff to get done. I've rented some scaffolding. I only have it for a week. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I ended up renting some scaffolding. It was $150 for a week's use. This is a 15 foot tower with casters. I think everything is here except for a list of instructions on how to put this together because uh, they didn't leave me that. It looks pretty straightforward. I think I can figure it out. And if not, there's always Google. The scaffolding is all assembled, and while technically it's not difficult to put together, I do have a fear of heights. Climbing up 15 feet in the air while carrying pieces of scaffolding up all by myself was not my favorite thing. Dad, that thing wouldn't fit in our yard. Not going in our yard, Russ. It's going in our living room. So before I get to painting all the stone, I need to clean it first. I'm just gonna use this stiff bristled brush and come up in here, just give the whole thing a good scrubbing before I start the primer coat. Okay, now is the moment of truth where I transform this stone fireplace and make it completely white. For a primer coat, I'm using Kills 2 Primer. It's a latex-based, water-based primer. All my research I did suggested that I go with a latex paint on this fireplace. I should also mention that I'm brushing the entire thing with this stone and that uneven surface. There's just no way you could roll it. Using a paint sprayer would make a huge mess. It's a lot more tedious. It's gonna be a lot more work, but the proper way to do this is do it with a brush. I got this four inch brush that's made specifically for latex. Let's do this. There is no going back now. <laughs> Here we go. So I've got two coats of primer on the fireplace and it was every bit as tedious as I thought it was gonna be. So I posted a couple things on Instagram showing me doing the painting and I had several people jump in there and suggest that I spray it. The reason why I'm not spraying this is because I would essentially have to tent off my entire living room and it would take a lot of time to do that. Getting all the way up to the ceiling, the scaffolding doesn't even reach that high. And then when you're actually spraying the stone, you're gonna have to spray in multiple different directions to get it on all of those nooks and crannies of the stone, which means you're gonna have a lot of paint buildup, which means you're gonna have to come back with a brush and do all that fine detail work. I've had really good results with the primer coats. With that, I'm gonna throw on these last two coats of this Glidden flat white. 
So again, this is the more time consuming way of painting, but I believe it's the method that yields the best results. Sure, it's a lot of work too, but if I'm out in the cold and I'm committed to decorating the house, I'm gonna do it right and I'm gonna do it big. Also, I'll make sure to drop a link below for this paint caddy. This thing was awesome. Oh, and Chloe jumped in to help out, which was amazing. Tackling a big project like this is always better when you have some extra hands. I am covered in paint. That was not fun. The results are amazing, but especially on the backside, getting up in between that beam that runs along the ceiling and the stone on the fireplace, there was about, I don't know, maybe four inches of clearance in there. And trying to get my hand all up in there and paint, I had to chop that brush down just so it'll fit. And then being on top of a ladder that's on top of scaffolding, which again, I don't love heights. <laughs> I am so glad the painting is done. Now I can go pick up that Reclaim beam that I'm gonna use as a mantle from Vintage Reclaim Lumber. Let's go. Okay, I'm back at my favorite lumber yard in Oklahoma City and that's Vintage Reclaim Lumber to see if I can find that perfect Reclaim beam that's gonna become our new mantle. Let's go check it out. So as you can see, Vintage Reclaim Lumber has a ton of these things. Now what these are, they're called either crane matting, crane beams, there's a lot of different names for them, but specifically what they're used for is sometimes underground mining operations, or if they're having uh, heavy equipment that they need to move across a culvert, they essentially create giant mats out of these hardwood beams that are stitched together and a piece of all thread, you can see some of it up here, is run through it and the whole thing is is screwed together and held together and extremely strong. Today we're gonna find the perfect reclaimed beam out of one of these stacks. They got this uh, set of pre-cut beams up here in the front, uh, kind of for you know show for potential customers. I'm gonna pick through this stack here and see if I can find one that's gonna work. Okay, I think I found one that's gonna work perfectly. This one right here is 10 by 12. This is about 94 inches long. My fireplace is 94 and a half inches long. I'm actually gonna cut it a little bit shorter, but it's already got these, uh, these holes right here that I'll use to mount with all thread and some nuts. Today I'm showing off the Anchor 521 Portable Power Station. The Portable Power Station has an electric vehicle class lithium phosphate battery that provides you a safer portable power and has a lifespan that's six times longer than conventional batteries. Now, as you know, I live in Oklahoma where we're kind of known for having really bad weather and almost a year to the day, we had a huge ice storm that knocked out power and my wife and I didn't have power for 11 days. You know, we had to get creative, I only wish I had this product back then. With the Anchor 521 Portable Power Station, you can recharge an iPhone 20 times. You can charge a MacBook Air four to five times. This thing will run a 35 watt fan for five hours. You can charge up to six devices simultaneously. It's got a car socket, a USB-C port, two USB-A ports, and two standard plugs. And you can have 100% renewable energy by plugging in optional solar panels to charge this unit. And the Anchor Portable Power Station comes with an included DC charger and an automotive charger in the box. This is the perfect portable power station to take on your next road trip, to have stashed in your go bag, to take camping, to have in your tornado shelter, anywhere where you need quick, safe, portable power. The Anchor 521 Portable Power Station is the way to go. And of course, a big thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out the links below. And when you support my sponsors, you help support this channel. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so I've got this massive beam back here in my shop and now comes the time to turn this into a mantle. Now to do that, I've gotta do some chainsaw work because I want those two holes that I'm gonna use for mounting to be centered on the beam. I'm gonna cut this side to match the overhang on this side and then I've got a lot of sanding to do. I do like the natural color of this beam. It's got kind of a driftwood quality to it, but it's not gonna look good against that white stone. So I need to sand this whole beam and then I'm gonna stain it 
a darker brown color, which I think is gonna look really good. And then I can get to the logistical and structural challenges of actually mounting this beam to my fireplace. That's gonna be really difficult given how heavy this thing is. But first, let's get this thing looking awesome. Okay, so as you saw, my uh, chainsaw blade is super dull. You know, I could run to the store and get a new chainsaw blade, but by the time I did all of that, I could do this by hand just as fast, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut as far as I can through with a circular saw, and then finish off that cut with some hand saws, and uh, really, that's what I get for not making sure my chainsaw blade is sharp, so. I have to cut off about 10 inches, which means I'll end up with a five inch inset on either side of the mantle. And that width should match up nicely with the hearth below. As you can tell by how sweaty I am, uh, I just finished cutting this off, but then I realized after I checked the camera that the memory card was full and didn't actually catch uh, the piece falling off. All that work, and I didn't get to show it to you, so here's a dramatic reenactment. So this was like this. Oh, hold on, how am I gonna do this? Okay. Hold on. Yes! It went something along those lines. All right, for my next trick, I'm gonna show you how to sand for hours and not be miserable doing it. Just kidding, that's not possible. Okay, safety first. In order to stain it properly, I need to sand this oak beam to at least 120 grit so that stain doesn't penetrate too quickly and make the wood darker than what I'm going for. I also had to do some shaping of the edges and cleanup of the checks to get any loose debris out of the way. I'm making a template out of plywood so I can transfer the hole locations to the fireplace itself. And I had to get creative on marking the holes on the plywood since I didn't have any writing utensils long enough to reach all the way through. I decided to burn in a spot with a torch and while this worked, it wasn't super accurate. So I can't say I recommend this technique. Plus you probably wanna stay away from doing anything goofy like this. Remember, don't try this at home kids, I am a professional. For the stain, I went with this Verithing dark walnut and the instructions state that you should apply the stain across the grain and then wipe away the excess with the grain. Now when I sanded this, I thought I sanded away most of those saw marks. Can't see the line, can you, Russ? No. But as I applied the stain, it really highlighted them, which I think it looks really cool on a piece like this. It's definitely a more rustic aesthetic, which usually isn't my style. But on a piece like this, I just think it looks really good to have those saw marks popping through. I brought the template back to the house to mark the hole locations that I need to drill into the stone. Make sure you check your local building code concerning mantle placement, but typically it should be 12 inches above the firebox with additional requirements based on the size of your particular mantle. I first tried to drill the holes using this masonry bit, but it was not making a dent into the stone. So I jumped on my phone and asked the Instagram brain and I got several suggestions to try a core drill bit. And that's what I switched to here. It did mean that I had to drill a larger hole than what I needed because the smallest drill bit I could find was one and nine sixteenths of an inch. So to fix this, I jumped on the CNC and machined some plywood spacers. And those match the outside diameter of the all thread that I'm using. And then the outside diameter of the spacer matches is the inside diameter of the hole in the stone. I'm using this Total Boat Thixo Epoxy to mount the all thread into the stone, and I'll make sure to drop a link for this stuff down below. It works so well, as you'll see here in a minute. I packed in the spacers and then squeezed in as much epoxy as I could and repeated that for the last two spacers as I pushed them into the hole. You can also see that I drilled four holes initially, but abandoned this because one, two pieces of all thread is more than sufficient to hold the weight of this mantle. And two, the more pegs that I add, the more difficult it's gonna be to get everything to line up perfectly with that all thread going into the back of the mantle and having everything perpendicular to one another. So I've got the mantle over to the house and that in and of itself was a task. This thing is so heavy. Getting it up onto those threaded rods is gonna be really, really difficult. I think the best way to go 
is just straight brute force, so that's what we're gonna do. So Matt and Christina came over to help out, as well as Joe, who you guys all know from Last Leg Woodworks. We were gonna just do a test lift here to see how it went and then put it back down, but they called an audible. We just went straight ahead for the mounting and it went about as well as you could hope and popped right on with just a little bit of persuasion. And then I came back and added the washers and the nuts and she was holding up nice and strong with zero sag. Last I'm adding some of this Total Boat Wood Honey as a finish and this mantle was done. So when we first bought this house, I had this vision of this fireplace being painted white with a reclaimed beam mantle. And to see that all come to fruition is really gratifying. And the best part was this project was finished just in time for Christmas, which means we get to hang our stockings and being our first Christmas in this house just makes it that much more special. Okay, thanks as always for checking this one out and I'll see you back here next time.